Now it's uh, time to uh, welcome uh, Kirsi Alkala. She's a uh, professor at Jøvik uh, uh, in Norway. Uh, and many of you also remember her from December when we, uh, she was also here and doing a presentation related to passwords. Uh, a method for ranking authentication products. I talked to Kirsi earlier and, uh, well, at least to me, uh, she made some uh, jaw-dropping <laughs> disclosures in, in December in her presentation, there were some things that were, to me was pretty amazing. And now it's like, considering Frank's talk earlier today, uh, you see it's now presenting something that could be, uh, <coughs> no offense of course, but something more, a little more realistic on how to evaluate authentication products. So, Kirsi? Yes, thank you. Yes. Um, so this is part of my uh, PhD thesis, which I defended yeah, last year. And uh, this is what I'm going to talk today. I go through a couple of uh, example scenarios, scenarios where application is done, uh, challenges what companies are facing when they are selecting authenticated products, and then I will show you the methods. And if we have time, I will an example of the use method. Um, yes. If we take the security level first um, and consider uh, information which is not sensitive or confidential. Uh, now it's a very popular to lock your sport activity to net. Uh, I would consider that as a place that you don't need very strong authentication method. Even weak password will do. You will get yourself in and type in that is today have I I have bike ten kilometers. Well done me. Um, then we have uh, sites which contain confidential information. Uh, for example, credit card, Amazon.com, for example. I have my credit card information here, buying books. Um, a little bit higher security level should be needed. Uh, currently they are using passwords, so I'm not really sure if that's uh, high enough, but that's how it is. Then we have information which is both confidential and sensitive. If we think about our personal tax information, or uh, internet bank. So here we need a higher medium security level, level three. And at the moment, at least what I have is a static password and one time passcode. A little bit higher again. Um, if we think about the uh, electronic location journals, uh, there is your whole medical information recorded and those who are using it they have access to multiple accounts <coughs> so there we need a higher security level and in Norway um, what the norm for security information in uh, health, health Norway actually saying that if you are using uh, or accessing electronic patient journals in the hospital the level three is enough but if we are accessing it in the home or mobile application, then you need a level four. And in the level four, that means that uh, then we should use BKI. But security level is not the only one we're supposed to think. We have users. And now, if we take that Pico, for example, uh, you said that we should use it on the front of the screen. How can a person without arms using it? Or older people with the Alzheimer's or shaking hands? We have a bunch of these people. Uh, blind, visually impaired persons. Difficult to use. Same goes as well, <coughs> normal. Uh, normal keyboard, typing passwords, or inserting cards. Your um, 
um, that will use breath. It's very difficult to insert in a small, small little hole. Um, if you think about passwords in this case, uh, we can integrate it in that way that we can say them. Uh, then we come to this point that the security level is not the same when you're doing it at home or in a public place. At home you have a higher security level because there's not the listening to you. Um, but there's problems because um, when you are saying it, you pronounce it a little bit differently and then there are some letters which you pronounce the same way. So, um, yeah, there are problems. <coughs> we could use the biometrics, um, some biometrics, not of course everybody, uh, everybody has everything. Um, but then there's an issue with the cost. Who pays the bill? Is it that user who has to buy a different sensor than everybody else? Uh, is it that service provider who pays? And it comes to the different, what kind of service it is? Is it a commercial service or is it the state who provides the service? Um, and then young people and old people. Uh, young people, we learn quickly to use uh, new systems, new applications. But how about old people? Uh, I was in Oslo, a uh, rain station, not a long time ago. And I bought the train ticket. We have this nice little machine where you can uh, just click, 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 and you tell where you go, and when you go, and you pay with your credit card. It takes you a couple of minutes, one minute if you're fast. Um, but there's a problem with those machines, and not actually the machines, but the system. Oslo railway station is well known for a uh, ready card thief games. They stand behind you in the queue, and they look what kind of password you type, and then when you're going with the train, they take your purse. They follow you. So I was there standing in that machine and uh, doing my thing. And then there was older couple coming behind me. Could you please help us? We don't know how to use the machine. <laughs> I was thinking that good that it's me. I click where they want to go. I insert the card, break the bill. Go wipe the bin and there are your tickets. Have a nice trip. So there are things to think about. And then we have an environment. Uh, we use authentication in different places and there we have to think what kind of temperature it is, humidity, lighting conditions, magnetism. Um, how many of you have a magnet card? How many have you destroyed? Yeah. I took this, I got Mac not a long time ago. And I was having it, or carrying it in my backpack with my cards, of course, as I have done my previous computer. Within two weeks, I managed to destroy two, so I'm complaining this magnet here in the Mac. I think they did not like me very much when I went. I want to have a new card again. Yeah, and then hygienic standards and needs. Um, in a hospital environment, I uh, did my PhD in health services, so I have lots of uh, examples from hospital. Um, hygienic is very important in hospital. So, for example, in operation rooms, we should have an authentication product, which is dot slash. The cards are not very practical because you touch them without gloves and then you suppose you touch with your gloves and then you go and operate the person. At this moment. So there are a bunch of things to think about. 
then I run a little survey on companies that how they actually select the authentication methods and products. And the thing is that there actually are quite lots of to choose from if you actually engage yourself to look what kind of products you have. We can categorize mechanisms in three basic password tokens and biometrics. And each of those they have different methods. Like passwords, we have bingos and textual passwords, images, tokens. Here we have now already shown two different versions. Mechanical keys, magnet buttons, biometrics. There we have a lot of to choose. And each of them, when it comes to the product line, has a different product. Um, different uh, vendors providing the products. So, how do you choose that, that you will get the best, which is the best for you? Uh, what was found out in that little survey I made was that the um, companies, they often take that what is provided from them. Vendor says, take this, yes, we take, without asking any of the um, and it also comes to this that it's very difficult to compare. It's uh, easier to compare when you are in, uh, within the same category. If you compare two different token products, then you have a different standard, or uh, same standards as you wish to, to compare. <laughs> <laughs> but across categories, then it's uh, hard. How do you compare uh, fingerprints against the password, for example? Shouldn't be too hard. Are you sure? Our method, what we were thinking, is that the you should first take into consideration where you use it, what is your group of users. And then we scale it. So, there is the overview of the method. First, we check the user group and env environmental compatibility. And then we have uh, possible products. And then, those possible products, then we check the security level. If it's a high enough for our needs, then we have a secure product. Then we take those secure products to the next stage, and we check the usability. If it's usable for users, then we have a list of usable products. And then in the end, we can check what they cost. So the first one, uh, there we have a user, device, and environment requirements. And the user, I already need a bit hinted you that we should check our user group what kind of work task it has and what kind of uh, disabilities users have. And those products which do not fit to those users, we just kick out our list. Physical environment, we have to take consideration or under consideration the surroundings. And if the product is that it's not usable in those environmental requirements, then it's <coughs> no use for us. And then also the device, what kind of size it has and memorability capacity, and if we need it to be used in the long distance. So basically what you need. Then we go to security level. And that was really a bit more difficult to define. Um, the point here is that uh, you have to know your assets, what are they worth for you, what you are securing. And you have to decide the security level of your information you're protecting. Then you take the product 
and you start determining the security level for the product. Um, I have now mapped uh, our security levels against least security levels and also consequences. We also have done the risk analysis are probably aware of these consequences. And our method we used to what we call calculate entropy levels. So when we are determining a security level for an authentication method or a product, um, it is a minimum of uh, authentication key space and uh, hardness of the circumventation. Um, now we have those three different categories, passwords, tokens and biometrics. So we also have uh, own formulas for each of those. Um, authenticator SPAS uh, space, key space for the passwords. That easy for you all, right? You know how to contact. For tokens, that is the set of token. And for the biometrics, that is um, made by Ogorman. Oh. One over uh, false match rates. And um, we can use these, the estimation. And then the hardness of the circum circum circumventation, or um, for the password, there we take into account FX and social, social engineering and uh, testing passwords, how easy to get passwords. Those are those most easiest FX against passwords. We take those. And we get the entropy level. For tokens, similarly, um, we take the probability of that one loses a token and it's uh, founded by a uh, new person, a person using it in a company and getting access. And the second one is uh, copying the token. How is it copied? And biometric. How easy it is our probability, how easy to get the original shampoo or the forge to sample. Like a fingerprint, if I'm touching a glass, how easy to take the fingerprint from there and use it in the sensor. Different sensor, different probabilities. Right? And the usability. Here, you have to talk with your users how long they are willing to use time for authentication that they're supposed to work, right? <coughs> you have a little bit more time when you are in the free, free time. Um, so, that is uh, dependent your users. And they set up the threshold limit here. And what we take in account in usability times is the time, how long it takes to enroll yourself in the system, set up a new password, or set up a first password, uh, enroll a biometric, or uh, issue a card. A transaction, how long it actually takes you to insert that or give validator and then get, uh, gain access. But also uh, continuing uh, authentication authenticators like the Pico, there that transaction would be zero all the time uh, authenticating. How long time it takes you to renew authenticator and delays made by human if you type wrongly or insert the card on the wrong side and using a wrong finger. Those are human delays, and then of course you have a system delays. You put 
is to get through. I used one year to take a statistic over a year and take how long it takes. And then in the end, you have a cost. You have an infrastructure cost and you have an administration cost. Infrastructure costs are those when you are building a new system. There you take into account equipment, software, implementation, enrollment phase, and storage. And then you have administration costs, which goes all the time. If you have a new workers coming in, you have to enroll for enrollment in. You renew, terminate, allocate when people are leaving your company. Uh, license cost, maintenance cost, maybe there's some other. You add those, take a year again and check how much it is. So that was the offer you offered. Then I have a little scenario here. So we can call the method once again. Now let's say that we have a hospital uh, trust having uh, 11,000 employees. Hospital, a hospital trust means that, that we have a single administra administration system but uh, separate units. So it's not one building to separate. And we allocate the personnel, medical personnel, with the EP, electrical patient journals. And now we consider that we have a closed network and then secure cables so that uh, we basically just talk about the user and uh, and we are looking for a two-factor or three-factor actually so that the first one is that we use a card to access the room with a little pin card then we have that actual accessing authenticator to the uh, patient journal And now, very important to use it. All the numbers I have used there, they are not from the real, real cases. And then say that we are looking for three different authenticators. Uh, standard password, fingerprint. I have now selected the digital the personal URU, 4000 fingerprint sensor very finger as a recognition algorithm and then the third one is the one time password generator by RSI. Now we were lucky the users are capable to use all these three and because we are leaving out the operation rooms at the moment, and um, also the environment is uh, approved. But uh, environmental requirements are fulfilled. Um, yeah. Now we should need that a higher medium security level, more than twenty entropy, and if we check this one. Now I have assumed that we have a pin code, that card and a pin code. Uh, I think I forgot to type some numbers in. But let's now consider that the card uh, had the 11 as an entropy. And then we have a um, password. Let's say it's a minimum eight characters. So we take that minimum and assume that people should use all four characters in. Um, and then where you get these numbers are that you have to run some kind of uh, checkups among your users 
see how vulnerable they are against social engineering attacks or guessable passwords. You have to you have to know your risks. And so these are let's say that these are taken from that kind of analysis. So we have got an uh, entropy level eleven for the password. Fingerprint sensor. Uh, it's a zero point zero zero one percent for the false match rate in that particular sensor. Um, but uh, it, uh, we can force that uh, I had a master student who actually managed to dig out that number. We can manufacture a fingerprint, fingerprint for that sensor so and gain access. So that uh, sensor got then can uh, entropy in it. And then the last was a uh, one time password generator. Um, six digits and uh, it was the hard, hard to manufacture forge copy, but uh, you can lose it. So that's kind of on the statistic well, loss, loss statistic. So it got the 13. And now when we have a uh, multi question. Yeah. Uh, is, I mean, some tokens can break as well. Is that included in loss? Or? Uh, no. Okay. Then it's not lost. Then it, I mean, then it's a usable loss of all the adversary. Yeah. And it's not this type. Okay. Yeah. So now you have a multi-authenticator, so I just sum up entropies. Yeah. Uh, the probability for loss seems extremely low. I mean, uh, yeah, but like I said, this is just an uh, example yes, but, but how to use. Yeah, but, but as this, uh, I mean, is, is this per user or is it? Is that the whole company. Um, what I was, I now assume that, um, let's see what I assume. I assume that, that there are one was for years. Then you get. Okay. One of these lost per year. Per person or per entire? Entire. Mm -hmm. Those 11,000. Might be a little bit long. It's like this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a little long. Like they're very good users. Yeah, but you got the points. Yeah. So you sum up then. And in this example, they were all above 20. Also, one question. Yeah. Uh, the password entropy for the standard password, is that based on what's actually being used as password, or is it possible? Yeah, you could. You, uh, you, you were should. referring to a NIST standard entropy for that as well, right? Huh? Or you were re referring to a NIST standard entropy, right? Or yeah. Right, so that's a bit high. Yeah, it's high. Yeah. So, but then, um, if you if you calculate entropy for that first one, it's going to be much more than a circumvention, uh, and then the circumvention is what is taken into account. So you get that eleven on those circumvention points. Um. Yeah. And the usability. Now let's say that the uh, personnel are willing to wait 12 seconds for one session. Uh, if you count to 12, it's already quite a long time. But let's say that they are willing to wait 12 seconds. And in case that they have to do eight authentication session per day, then they use uh, 1.6 minutes for that. So that's the threshold that they are willing, willing to spend. And then we compare all, um, all the times of these three against the 1.6. And there we see that the uh, password is now too long, takes too long time to use it. So we rule it out. And then in the end, we check the cost 
Now I have used cost, which were which I found from the internet. So there are no discounts available. So just adding some numbers from the web, and this is what I got. So according to this, I got the 80 and 48 euro per user per year for the fingerprint sensor, and that would be our best product for that user generic. <laughs> Might be a little bit from, but again, you can. Uh, can I just ask? Uh, yes. Was this scenario also for accessing such as patient records, or was this access to the hospital's computer systems? What What was the the scenario? Just to you not specify. Patient record records. Patient records. Yeah. But then you have to, you have to access, um, okay. They have different systems that they use. They have uh, one for the pictures and one for the laboratory and yeah. one for the information. So, and, uh, but this was now for the records. Yeah. This is hypothetical now. They are not right numbers yeah. here. Our method for the people uh, I have control that you can use when you compare all categories, and it really takes account the user. I'm for user. User has user has to be uh, happy, otherwise you don't get very good security at least, and uh, not nice to work if you have a bad system. Um, and if you are interested to read, these are the papers where you can find the method and uh, more thorough explanation where I have taken my numbers for the example. Unfortunately, they are not free. You have to pay. They do access, but um, yes. Questions? More questions? Do you have a free online web application where we can type in our own numbers to? I have it in Excel sheet if you want to have it. So you have them? Okay, yeah. I'm not a programmer, so I have not managed to make this graphical. Yeah, well, there are several <laughs> programmers in here that should be up for the challenge, I guess. But, uh, I have it in Excel. <coughs> Questions for Kirsi? No? Okay, well then, uh, thank you Kirsi, once again.